It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Niners and the Jags. All that and more coming up next. Well, no rain to worry about today, but as you'd expect this time of year, very muggy in downtown Jacksonville here at TIAA Bank Field. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Brandon Gordon joined as always by Charles Davis. But Charles, a lot of optimism here in the Sunshine State about these Jaguars. They're the defending AFC South champs. They won a playoff game last year and gave the Chiefs all they could handle in the divisional round. And last season was seen as one where they were just going to try and rebuild and regroup. And they did all of those things and then exceeded expectations. Quietly, they've amassed a lot of talent and they expect to make another run in their division. Then for the visiting 49ers, you know, they're exciting on the offensive side of the ball, but it's the defense that really provides a lot of stability. They were second by a whisker to the Bills in total defense a year ago. And they have all pro caliber players at all three levels, all capable of taking over a game. Now the Michigan man, Jake Moody, to get us started. And off we go from Jacksonville. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Well, the Jaguars ready to go on offense for the first time. And they're led by the former number one pick in the draft in his third season now, Charles, Trevor Lawrence. Last year, we got the Trevor Lawrence and so many tapped to be the savior of the Jaguars. He broke 4,000 yards for the first time and threw 25 touchdown passes and guided his team to the playoffs. This young man, he's been good since the first time he picked up a ball in youth league. They expect nothing less from him again this season. Lawrence now off the bootleg, and he fends him off. Caught on the right side by Jones. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. The game's first play produces six yards, brings up second down. A man coming off an 1,100-yard campaign last year. Here's Travis Etienne. And this will be a Jaguars first down as he gets this up past the 30. It's great seeing that type of run from Etienne. And look, I know we couldn't consider him for rookie of the year last year, but it really was his rookie season since an injury cost him all of 2021. And he looked like a rookie of the year. Ninth in the NFL with over 1,100 yards for a surging Jaguars offense. On first down, right back to ETN. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. Well, it's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. Lawrence. And he will find Ridley on the left side. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that'll bring us to a third and four. The Lawrence will throw. Screenplay. Here's ETM. And he'll be taking Dez head first down yardage. Give him six yards, and they do can on third. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. Meanwhile, Lawrence's throw taken in by Ridley here. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. 23 yards, the final tally. 
Really a solid start here on the opening drive, Charles. He's now 4-4, and they're already in plus territory. Brandon, he's been so precise to start this game. Like we're watching an operation taking place right now. Master Sirk. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 34. Lawrence's throw in the hands of Jones. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far on the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. They go play action with Lawrence. And this complete right side of the tight end, Farrell. Play number nine now on this pretty long opening drive, but this is third down. Play action, it's Lawrence. That's gonna be knocked away and incomplete. Fourth down now as San Fran's defense was strong in coverage. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs, able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. Fourth down, here's Lawrence. And it's incomplete, they cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Jags come up empty on fourth down. And on the opening drive of the afternoon, the defense forces a turnover on downs. And the Niners offense set to go to work, and it's last year's revelation, Brock Purdy, who leads them out in season number two from Iowa State. There weren't many bigger stories last season than Purdy, who's officially the most famous Mr. Irrelevant of all time. Won each of his first five starts and almost guided his team to a Super Bowl. He's really forced the team to reevaluate its plans at quarterback because he looks like the real deal. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Here's Mitchell now to kick off the drive. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. It may be only a gain of three yards, but that back, he deserves a lot more credit on the play. That could have easily been stopped at the line, but his vision and his determination found some space to turn it into that modest gain. What a pickup this man was last year. It's Christian McCaffrey, and he's going to have a Niners first down as he's got this past the 35 to about the 37. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. Back to the ground on first. It's McCaffrey. And yeah, this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. From the 46, here's second down in a yard. Purdy. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. And Kittle going to have a 49ers first down as he's going to get this down to the 45-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. So after several rushes to start the game, Charles, they go to the air there and get a nice completion. Nice mix-up on the play calling, right? Establish the running game, make the defense think you're going to do it again, and then hit them over the top. Now you've got them betwixt and between. They don't know which way you're going to come at them. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. The Niners have the first down on a gain of 11. Purdy from the gun. Complete to the tight end, Kittle, over the middle of the field. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. Stop. 
Play action. Now Purdy. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Well, that was his first target of the game, and it's going to take at least one more target to get him on the board. Took a nice substantial hit to jar that catch loose from him. Incomplete pass. This will be the eighth play of the drive here. Third and four. Out of the gun, Purdy. Under pressure, and he will go down. Safe back at the 38. Devin Lloyd, the one to get home and earn that sack. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. And the 49ers take a 3-0 lead. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right, baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. They're coming off a fourth down gamble that last drive that backfired CD, but really not as badly as it could. Their defense held up and only gave up three points. And what they want to do is play off the momentum the defense gave them. Only giving up the three points in that situation after they failed on fourth down. Now they want to make it pay off. They want to pay homage to the defense and have their own drive pay off in points for themselves. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Now a second and ten. Here's Lawrence. He'll air this one out for Kirk. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Barton I came into this game eager to see how they would hold up in man coverage. And on that play, they held up quite well. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now Lawrence to throw. And down he goes. The 49ers get there. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. But they've been fighting and scratching and clawing for that first sack in the game, and it turns out to be a big one. Not just a short one right there behind the line. First one they get, ten-plus yards on a guy who has the legs to escape most of these. Here's Logan Cook now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. Here's McLeod on the return. Found good room to run there, returns it 14 yards. And the Niners set up well. They take over first and 10 on the short side of the field. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. A handoff left, McCaffrey, and he is going to lose yardage here. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. And that's exactly what you're looking for at the inside linebacker spot. Versatility. He can drop into coverage, or as he did on that last play, 
Use his speed to get to the perimeter and knock the ball carrier for a loss. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Here's Purdy. That's complete. It's Brandon Ayuk. And they move this all the way down to the nine. It's a gain of 35. The timing was absolutely true as he caught it working across the field. Plenty of space for him to roam. But notice how he keeps his head on a swivel, looking for defenders who may crop up out of nowhere. That turned into a big play. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. They'll try to run with McCaffrey. And he's going to ball his way down to about the one-yard line. Now, hang on here a second. Looks like a Jaguar in some obvious discomfort from that last play. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Mitchell will score. Touchdown, 49ers. Everybody in the stadium knew what they were going to do right there, CD. Three tight ends on the field, all that extra bulk, and they run it in. And you saw where that one went, right? You run it over your best blocker. I can just see the head coach right now. I want to run this one over the big boy. And they got it done. Moody good with the extra point. And the lead grows to 10 0. Just a four play drive that time. And it ends with a one yard touchdown run. So an early 10-0 lead for them now as they kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. They look to get something started. They need to down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. Now Lawrence. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Here's second and ten. Straight ahead, ETN. He gets away from one. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. Third and two, now Lawrence. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. Well, based on what we've seen so far, I don't think you can even call this an off day anymore, partner, because this group we're watching, they are totally out of rhythm trying to get their game plan up and running. That zero on the scoreboard is glaring down at them with every incompletion. The Cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. McLeod to return it. That'll go as a 46-yard punt with a return of seven. And the Niners will go on offense first and ten. And San Francisco gets set to go here. They're looking sharp out early to a 10-zip lead and looking for more as they've got it first and ten. They start on the ground with McCaffrey. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. 
44 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. That's the type of impact play you expect from McCaffrey, the comeback player of the year runner-up in 2022. Despite a midseason trade, put up almost 1,900 all-purpose yards and also made his second Pro Bowl. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. On second down, McCaffrey. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, you know they had a third down play on standby just in case, but he says no need with that carry. Runs like that will continually earn him more work in this and future contests. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Back to throw, Purdy. He'll get this into the hands of Ayu. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Now a second and two. Purdy now to throw. Throw left side, McCaffrey's got it. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 17-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. One well, of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, try to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to George Kittle. It's tight end, but it'll be second down. McCaffrey running up the middle. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. That was another good run, and he's having an excellent day. And right now, I don't think his team could have any more confidence in handing him the football. Ten-nothing the score after one on EA Sports. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter. This will be the eighth play of the drive here, third and four, as they've got it as we resume action. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, Took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. And his kick here is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So three points there, and they continue to build this first half lead. Yeah, every little bit helps. And the more that you can put together drives and start controlling the tempo, controlling possession, finishing with points, the better off you're going to be. So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. They find themselves down 13-0 here as they try to get things started offensively. First and 10.
Here's Lawrence to throw. Now, a quick throw there is incomplete. Christian Kirk, the man he was looking for, and that'll bring up second down. ETN up the middle. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Now Lawrence. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Jags first down, and comfortably so, as he gets five there on third and a yard. Well, we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Shows some confidence, supreme confidence. Big-time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Now, that's absolutely terrific technique right there by the corner. Exhibit A. Zone coverage, knew where his man was in relation to the football at all times, and made a nice play. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Here's a give to ETN. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Now that's a big time run. Lightning in a bottle, forget it. He exploded out of the bottle for that type of a pickup. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Looking to throw, Lawrence. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. And from the 34, here's second and four. Lawrence. The pressure gets to Lawrence, and he'll go down. Multiple defenders getting to him there for a huge loss. Well, you're already up a couple of scores here in the first half defensively, and Charles, they just seem to be playing really free on that side of the football. I love the observation because with that type of a lead, they feel like they can take a few more chances and be even more aggressive, and it's been paying off for them so far this game. So now after the sack of Lawrence, the Jags looking at a third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. So a couple of first downs on this drive, but it's looking like another empty possession. And those empty possessions are certainly starting to pile up. So the adjustments that teams talk about all the time have to be taking place. They've got to analyze what's breaking down and figure a way to fix it. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. Christian McCaffrey and his 49er teammates back onto the field. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Now on first down, it's Purdy. Completes it to Jennings. And able to get it across the 20 before they get to him. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. When the hitch route has run really well, that jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space, all you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. Now Purdy. 
thrown across his body, and it's intercepted. It's Devin Lloyd with a pick, and he'll return it to the 24-yard line. Oh, and I saw the pressure coming at him. That just looked problematic. Hit him as he threw it, and the interception ensued. Let me pay homage to the man who stood in this spot before. He always talked about how much pressure is in the face of a guy, and can he step into a throw. And when you can't do that, oftentimes interceptions result. The Jaguars getting set to go. And they'll start with great field position, trying to get back into this one. It's first and ten here. On first and ten, it's Lawrence. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. Well, they certainly knew their challenge as this series began. And they got a stop on play number one. Goal now, get two more stops and limit the damage to a field goal. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They go play action now. Lawrence. That's complete to his tight end, Farrell. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Lawrence will throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Down two scores already. I don't think these guys would be too enthralled with the notion of settling for three here. Very nice job of execution on third down. Able to keep the drive moving. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. And they'll try the left side with ETN. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Travis Etienne, a 13-yard touchdown run. And the Jaguars have cut it back within a score. And they can thank their defense for this one. They were set up with a short field following the turnover, but they took care of business as well, working their way down and finishing with a strong run into the end zone for their first touchdown of the game. Extra point from McManus is good. And it's now 13 to 7. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Niners set to take over on offense. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to want to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. I believe I could see what they were trying to do there, but unfortunately, the back ran out of room. Too close to the sideline. And for defenders, we're often taught, 11 on the field, those sidelines can become the 12th defender. It worked to the defense's advantage on that play. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Devon Hamilton. Breaking through to get him to the ground. It's a loss of seven. 
Now Charles dealing with a third and long. They'll have to try to go back to the air again and this time avoid the sack. Certainly hard to try to establish momentum when all you're doing is going backwards, not protecting the passer, and he gets dumped on his backside. Purdy. He'll get this out right here to McCaffrey. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. They wind up getting 16, but even that's not quite enough. It's fourth down. I think that we all figured when he caught it that short of the marker that the defense almost relaxed and said, we've got this covered. And then all of a sudden, space to run after the catch. And now they're screaming, somebody get him down. Fortunately, they got to him and forced the fourth down. Wisnowski on to punt as he sends this one away. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it'll be Jaguar football as they take over deep in their own territory. Jacksonville offense gets the ball back. Travis Etienne and company head back out there. And I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit. He's, he's been great, but they haven't scored a lot of points. I think they still have to show him as a threat. Make sure he touches it a few times. But as you pointed out, Use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. Yeah, he's established himself well. Now can they put more points up? A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. From the shotgun, Lawrence able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now a fake on the jet sweep, and they'll instead run up the middle. And this will be a Jaguars first down as he's got this up to the 45-yard line. A CD a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's both. We know that he's fast in the open field, but man, his first step is so quick, too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning upfield, but also when you run those inside runs, he can get into the secondary so fast the linebackers don't have a chance to react. And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. Nice run defense presented there, and what I mean by that is discipline. Guys filling the right gaps in the right holes, no one over-pursuing, and making a very nice play. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's a second and nine. On the counter, ETN. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. 81 yards now for ETN, and he's got a first down. Well, if they continue to run the football this strong right up the middle, I don't know if they can wait till halftime to make adjustments. They better find a way to get it done series to series. I don't know if they need to sub some guys out, bring in extra people, maybe change what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball. But right now, they're running the ball very well right out of, and right up the middle. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Of course the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. On first down, Lawrence. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag is down. This could possibly be a push-off. What did they throw that on? 
Looked like some hands both ways. They got it on the offense. And sometimes there's a fine line between being the receiver and the DB, and he knocked that one away. Might have caused an incompletion that could have been an interception. A shotgun snap and a give to ETN. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. Now Lawrence to throw on second down. And his pass incomplete. The Jaguars on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This will be third and 19. Now Lawrence to throw. That is caught. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers 14. The defense shaking their heads, not aggressive enough, and they allow them to convert a third and 18. Going old reliable there to the slot on third down. And the slot position has become the bane of just about every defense's existence because how do you cover? Do you go with a bigger guy to try and use size? Can I go with a, try go with a quicker guy and sometimes even get out quick there? Very difficult to match up with that slot receiver. That's why they keep going back to him. And he's had the hot hand. On first and 10, it's ETN. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Now that's the type of play that'll fire up a defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all, or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. On oh, second down, ETN once more. And power running here down to the six yard line. Now hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. So they need two yards here on third down. Remember, they're already two of two on third down conversions on this drive. Here's Lawrence. And that is incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. I know we're just in the second quarter and there's a ways to go in this game, but that's a second drop. I'm wondering if that's a little bit of an alarm bell for them when they start calling plays on the offensive side of the ball. His eyes already looking upfield on that last one before he brought it in. Going for it, here's ETN. And he lost the football. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And hindsight 2020, I think they probably should have gone for the field goal, right? The three points would look really good right now, but I think what we just saw there, analytics really starting to creep into the game because more and more teams are saying, the more you go for it, the better your odds of getting it, the better your odds of scoring six points instead of three. They took a chance there, it just didn't pay off. Yeah, right here, the anti-analytics guys go thumbs up. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room that if you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Oh, they'll certainly be on the tablets going over that one for sure. 
Clearly, they were expecting something else out of the defense and couldn't adjust to make that completion happen. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. Purdy will set up to throw it here. That one complete to his receiver, Jennings. And he is going to have a 49ers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That play might not seem like much yardage-wise, but when you're looking at maybe having to go three and out and punt the football again, it becomes an important conversion. Now the question, can they keep it going from here? Purdy to throw it on first down. This is Jennings. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. Ten more for him on that one. He's been a busy man. It's a first down. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Brought to the ground by the linebacker, Foye Aluakon. Partner, the Mike linebacker, the middle linebacker has so many different responsibilities. How excited do you think he was to get home with that blitz? Yeah, he wants a sack. He got it. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. They don't want to repeat a first down. They'll keep it on the ground. And now they'll take a timeout defensively. After the second down play, they burn the timeout, making them sweat out the final few ticks here in the second quarter. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. And they're going to take a timeout defensively. So with fourth down coming up, they go ahead and burn it and say, we'll see what happens. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. Agnew now to return. So we have reached halftime in what's a six-point game at the break. As we now go downstate to Orlando and check in with Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. It's the 49ers out in front, and they will get the football first as well as we are back and started in the second half. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. And the 49er offense set to go to begin quarter number three. Purdy 
30, going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their 25-yard line. And he'll start by handing this off to McCaffrey. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven, past the 30 to the 32. Playing against a 3-4 front is really challenging for offensive linemen because they can do so many different things. But when you're running the football, if you can handle the nose tackle up front and it may be a guard can slide up to the second level and block a linebacker, that's when you have success running the football. Are you going to go in motion right? And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Two yards the loss, and now they go from second and two to a tough third and four. Out of the gun, Purdy. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it. And that's a strong performance there defensively to force incompletion, and more importantly, force a quick punting situation. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he's on to kick it away. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively, just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. Well, they obviously read man coverage their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro, bro. Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. That one goes for 24 yards. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 43. Now Lawrence. And yeah, that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Again on second and 10, it's Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. From the gun, it's Lawrence. And that is incomplete. Fourth down now as San Fran's defense was strong in coverage. How about this defense? They came up with a couple of big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. And this one is no good. He missed it. And the deficit will stay at two field goals. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. The 49ers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. 
And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. So after the missed long field goal attempt, this offense set up nicely at the 44-yard line. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Second down and right back to McCaffrey. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. They'll try and pick it up with Mitchell. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. So just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Second down and six now. Shotgun handoff now to McCaffrey. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it at every position, and we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. And not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. Third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Coverage is awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had lots of leg behind it. But now there is a penalty marker on the field, so let's see what this is about. And they'll accept that penalty. Lack of discipline defensively on fourth down, and now that leads to a first and ten. McCaffrey following the penalty. And he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Now a second and six. Again, they run. Again, it's McCaffrey. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Not a big run, not an explosive run, but they've held the ball for plenty of plays on this drive. They're just trying to impose their will on the defense right now. And they'll be in search of six yards here on third down. This is now the ninth play of the drive. Purdy. That's caught out right by Jennings. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot, it'll be fourth and inches. 
If this were baseball, we'd call this small ball. Instead of pushing it downfield, they throw a short pass trying to pick up the first down, but the defense rallies to the football and stops him short, bringing up a fourth down. On right, fourth down, here's Purdy. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Niners go for it, but it doesn't work out. And this 10-play drive winds up yielding nothing. Well, you feel the excitement build on those fourth down plays. Defense has to stay out there, but for the offense, when that thing doesn't work out, such disappointment. It can absolutely be a deflator, but how about the defensive guys? If they stop you on fourth down, they are absolutely elevated going to their bench. They're elevated now. Big stop on fourth down. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 16. This pass is going to wind up incomplete. When we start looking for big-time corners, we're going to start with athleticism. But without technique, you're not going to make plays as one we just saw there. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Lawrence. They'll find Farrell open left side. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Here's Lawrence to throw. And this pass broken up. Well, the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started. And that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty. And before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. As San Francisco's offense returns to the field. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. A good start to the drive. Here's that's caught out on the left side. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. 25 yards that time. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Now Purdy. This one caught by Kittle. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. It's another first down on a big gainer there, 33 yards. Now we know this offense has the potential to strike quickly, and they just bit off two huge plays on back-to-back -back snaps. So on the other side of the ball, you've got to go Band of Brothers' thought process. No one left behind, no pointing fingers, no accusations, because if you don't, those quick strikes we just saw, they become long-lasting. So a big play as it gets them all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. Purdy looking to throw. Again to the big tight end, George Kittle. And the 49ers are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. This offense can certainly move quickly when they want to. Three plays, three pass completions. In the blink of an eye, they've got a first and goal. Almost felt like a lightning bolt hit in this game, didn't it? For them to get downfield that quickly. And now first and goal, expect them to attack right here on this play. zone touchdown 49ers Ross Dwelly a five-yard touchdown and they are able to add on to their advantage this is where as a tight end you've got to really sell that this is a run they're gonna fake the give hope the linebackers bite and here they do just enough that split second that's all it takes for that tight end to leak out into the end zone touchdown 
Purdy will throw for it. And unable to connect. They don't get the two-point conversion here. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for a few years of two-point tries and see what the data tells us because a lot of teams want to throw the ball in this situation, this time unsuccessfully. I just wonder if maybe running the ball might be the way to go. With it moved up from the three to the two, you would think maybe a few more attempts at running. I, I think stats over time may bear out that running the ball will at least be the equal of throwing it in that situation. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of scald out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He'd love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 23 yards on the play. And that's one of the better plays we've seen this offense put together so far. They haven't been able to get on track much at all. But listen, they're only down a couple of scores with the rest of this quarter and the entire fourth remaining. So, stranger things have happened. Now Lawrence on first down. Throw right side caught by Ridley. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 16 more on that one and another first down. Now they have completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? They go play action with Lawrence. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. But to throw again is Lawrence. Well, this complete right side of the tight end, Farrell. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. On play action, Lawrence. So much for the run on third and one. Instead, it's a big chunk in the pass game. First down. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense could get down the field? It's taken them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up with a first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. And they'll run with ETN. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. 96 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. That's a great run right there on first down. Didn't quite get into the end zone, but now you've set yourself up for at least two, maybe three more shots from close range. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. ETN will get it into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. He's having a nice little game. Maybe already has an eye on that third touchdown. And how about what our producer, Christian McLeod, likes to say when they score touchdowns like this? He's put a tent up in touchdown city. Now McManus for the extra point. And this is back to a five-point game. 
So this drive spans seven plays. And it was capped off by a Travis Etienne touchdown run. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. Ray Ray McLeod to return. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. Brock Purdy and the 49ers out for their next possession. And he had the touchdown on the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverages last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter? And can there he goes, left side! He'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Getting it to him in space pays off big time. That winds up going for 31. What a luxury to have a tight end that can not only catch it, but then can run after the catch like that. What was the old expression back in the good old days that they used to carry pianos, pianos. on their backs yeah. when they were after they caught the football? Someone would stop and bang out a tune along the way as well. <laughs> but nowadays, these guys are essentially bulked up wide receivers, and they are a full part of the passing game, and we see a lot of big plays as we just saw there. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. Second and six. Here's Purdy. Completion certainly makes this upcoming third down a little bit more crucial. They need to find the right play to convert here and maybe start to tamp down a little bit of momentum. The other side is starting to gain. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Purdy now to throw. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. The corner blitz gets there as he goes down for a loss of seven. A CD, a little bit of feast or famine for him. He's had some success throwing the football, but also now he's been sacked four times. Yeah, you just mentioned the four sacks, but you're right. He has managed to hang in there and make plays at times. His offensive line, they've got to figure it out and pick things up and give him more opportunities. And he has to help them by getting rid of the ball a little bit quicker as well. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Well, certainly they'd rather have the scenario they had last time out, Charles. Remember, they had the short field. They took it in the end zone. Now this is going to have to be a longer, more sustained drive if they want to get points. Yeah, a little bit more of a quick strike opportunity last time by where they were on the field, and you're exactly right about that. But now, backed up a little bit. What's that old expression we love to use? Time to matriculate the ball down the field and try and do it again. Three quarters in the books. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. Here's a second and five. It's Jaguar football, but a little work to do for them. They trail here as we start the fourth. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. The best defensive lineman. They play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Now Lawrence to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Now he's free at the 35. Christian Kirk. Touchdown, Jaguars. Christian Kirk. 82 yards. And the Jaguars use the defensive breakdown to take the lead away here in the fourth. Pardon me, you know what the real key is to stopping a good passing attack? 
You tell me. Being able to tackle as soon as a guy catches a football. Didn't work out there. No, because when you give up the big run after catch, the rack yardage, that puts your defense in a big-time stressful position. A lot of rack yardage and a touchdown there on the big play. Lawrence going to look to throw for it. And this one's caught. And their fourth quarter lead grows by a couple more. So that effort gives them a three-point cushion and guarantees that a field goal going forward won't beat them. Yeah, that's really good strategy because that's all you care about. Not getting beat at this stage. At least give your team a fighting chance. To the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. Now the bad news for them, they've seen that cushion they once had totally evaporate, and they're working from behind. The good news, they now have the opportunity to regain the lead right back. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. They'll start with a run by Mitchell. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And your lateral to the line of scrimmage. Linebackers keep those shoulders square so they can go up and down. But when it's time to go, turn your shoulders just like a running back. Get through the line and hit the runner in the backfield. Back to throw, Purdy. Connects with Kittle underneath. Only able to gain a couple there, and that's going to set up a tough third and nine. They'll come to the line here, needing nine yards to pick up the first. Here's Purdy now on third and goal. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Niners first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Up the gut, McCaffrey. They'll take it past the 40 to the 41, second down. Second and seven. They stay on the ground, McCaffrey again. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. 102 yards now for McCaffrey. It's a first down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. First down, here's Mitchell. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. That tackle by Trayvon Walker. Nice play. He blows that up behind the line of scrimmage. This linebacking core, they've done a good job of keeping that running game in check, haven't they? They certainly have. And what they'll also do when this game is over is thank the guys up front, the big defensive line, because they've kept them clean, so to speak. Not letting blockers get to them, allowing them to run to the football and keep that running game bottled up. And a second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. The offense on third down, they've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. 
This is going to be third and 13. Now a draw play to McCaffrey. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. Out comes Calvin Ridley and the offense for their next drive. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. And they'll start on the ground. ETN trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play there. Second down. He's already fumbled once in this game, and I thought the ball started to jostle there a little bit, but they got to him quickly at the line of scrimmage. They sure did. And remember, if you're not a very confident runner and you've already dropped it once, if there's traffic around you, the only thing you think about is protecting the football, not gaining yards. On right, second down, ETN once more. And he'll be taken down at the 18. Five yards, now it's third and five. A tight game like this, such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line, they gotta protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hand of your running back. Tell them to take care of the ball and try to move forward. They get six on the pickup there as the drive continues. And that pickup on the first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. And that last reception puts him over 150 yards now on the game, Charles. And now it's not just execution. It's not just performance. It's a mental aspect that's going on. Because right now, he's got the defense so much on their heels. Got them looking at each other. Who's going to cover this guy? And what type of coverage can we put out there to try and slow him down? And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. They'll send Kirk in motion right. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and it's down to give up the middle. And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what we said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. A pretty good looking run there on first down. That'll go for nine yards, just short of the line to gain. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier, probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. The ball was tipped and fell incomplete, but it was tipped up in the air, so the guys on defense, they had to feel like that was a big opportunity, and it was missed. They needed a play to help turn things around a little bit. Ball's in the air. Can they rally to it and get it? On that play, they weren't able to. They'll take the ball batted away, but boy, they missed a big chance there. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. That close on third down, I think everybody probably expecting a run. Instead, they go to the air on third and short yardage. I realize this is a passing league, and they're liable to throw the ball on any down and distance. 
But that short, I do question the call. Run the football and pick it up. The kick by McManus is good. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So that gets him a little bit of breathing room, but not much. And you have to think back to the field goal that he missed earlier. This would be a two-score game right now if he had converted them. And if you and I are thinking about it, you know he is as well. Because in the back of his mind, he's thinking, I hope I get one more shot in an important spot. He just made that one. He wants one more later to truly make up for the earlier miss. Here's the Jaguar kick team now as they run up and send this one away. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. The 49er offense now making their way out onto the field. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 23. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. Right, they get Pro Bowl tackle Trent Williams for the infraction there. He'll set up to throw it here. Connects with Kittle underneath. So the completion good for six yards. And that will bring up second down. No trace of nervousness there. He was able to diagnose that play from his linebacker position, stay in excellent coverage, and bat the ball away. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Out of the gun, Purdy. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Josh Allen coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it also brings up fourth. This defense, they just continue to feast. Five sacks now as a unit. It's been quite an afternoon getting to the quarterback. And we're seeing it come from a variety of places as well. Sometimes just the guys up front getting to them. Other times you add extra guys rushing the quarterback, twists and stunts. It's been a variety, and they've had no way of blocking them. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. A 40-yard punt, no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Travis Etienne of the Jags offense set to take over again here. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see a back just kind of have a grin on his face every time his number is called because he doesn't feel like there are going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big-time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. Still on his feet. Touchdown, Jaguars! Travis Etienne, 60 yards! And the Jaguars use the big play to extend their fourth quarter lead. Well, he's used to running it that distance. Here he had to catch it, too, before making the run. Heck of a play for the score. There's not many things better for an offense than a back who is a complete guy who can run it and catch it. And we just saw him complete a big-time play for a touchdown. They'll look to throw. And this one incomplete. 
So they went for the two. They don't get it. Well, partner, since this new two-point rule came into play, offense has spent a lot more time working on it. That means the defenses are doing the exact same thing. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. Well, the 49ers settling in for their next drive. And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. Little screen pass, backdoored him, and that time worked well for a solid game. The throwing here, Purdy. This is Jennings. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. But correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. On first down, it's Purdy. He'll get this underneath to McCaffrey. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and it's second down. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Purdy looking to throw. Connects with Kittle underneath. And right now, defensively, you love that, don't you? I mean, you'll give them that play. And they'll take it every single time. This is almost like nickeling and diming it downfield, and too much time's going to run off the clock. And the Jags with five in the secondary now on third down. Now Purdy. Looking deep for Jennings. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. And the Jaguars are going to take over at their own 30-yard line. But here in the fourth quarter, defensively, you know that you're just going to blanket the field with defensive backs and say, OK, take your best shot. And that time, it's intercepted. And we've often seen teams go into the prevent early, way too early. And sometimes they get too soft in their coverages. But not in this case. They understood the situation and played it with the proper aggression. The Jaguars offense now heads back onto the field. They have to like the position that they are in. Fourth quarter, two-score lead, and now the ball back after the INT. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up, first and 10, right at the 30. They'll look to ETN to start things out get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six.
And they'll go again with ETN. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. On third down, here's Bigsby. And he will have a Jaguars first down. And that ought to be the one that seals the victory. And we'll see if the defense wants to stop it as they take the knee. Second and 11 now. Straight ahead, ETN. And he'll go down at the 28. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, and he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about <laughs> doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. Well, somebody lit a fire under that offense during the break, Charles. Remember, they trailed an intermission. They come out, they have the big second half, and that lifts them to the victory. And Brandon, trailing at halftime, we always talk about teams making adjustments. You know what the best adjustments usually are? It's just executing better. Because the game plan you put in place at the beginning of the week often still holds. You don't have to make wholesale changes. Just have to do it a little bit better, a little cleaner. And they did that in the second half, and that led them to victory. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Jaguars are winners here as we say so long from Jacksonville.